First of all, it was very touching for me to watch that, so thank you. I mean, amazing. Um, so I just got to compose myself for a second. First of all, welcome back to Barron. Thank you all for coming. So before we get started, I know you've been sitting a long time, so we're going to take a brief study break. So please stand up. Move around, get the blood flowing, say hello to the person next to you, introduce yourself. <laughs> Just like we do in Temple. <laughs> Feeling better? <laughs> Okay, recess is over. <laughs> Back to class. Is that me? <laughs> so this is Barron Capital's 40th anniversary and the 29th annual Barron Conference. By the way, doesn't feel that way. By the way, XL is the Roman numeral 40. It's not the size of everyone's t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> because we haven't been together for, I love those t-shirts by the way, my favorite ones we've ever had. Because, made by figs, uh, because we haven't been together for three years, I thought a brief refresher course on what you're likely to hear today would be helpful. So here it goes. Uh, I'm Ron, hi. I'm from Asbury Park. That's Bruce, not me. But I used to work on that beach. Uh, I'm an investor. So that was motorcycle Ron, that was me. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm actually in this picture not an investor yet but I was coming to New York to become an investor as soon as my broken arm healed that I had it in a motorcycle accident. <laughs> so, uh, so we invest in people. We invest for the long term. Some other things I might mention today include John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, The Beatles, Golda Meir, Superman, Batman, Iron Man, and Elon Musk. <laughs> so one more thing. My wife Judy tells me that I give the same speech every year. And funny, Linda says the same thing. And so did David and Michael. So I decided to challenge that notion by creating a Google word cloud from my prior speeches. What do you know, Tesla, Elon Musk, <laughs> America, JFK? So when you're listening to me, I'd like you to think about this cloud, the words I use, and judge for yourself if you think I'm being repetitive. A final announcement. If you're seated in the first three rows, you can expect to get wet. Now that's SeaWorld. I just want to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> So how can Judy and Linda think I'm boring? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not boring. <laughs> so first, I want to thank the executives who spoke to us this morning about their businesses and why they're competitive advantaged. ANZUS, the leading digital simulation business. Alexandria Real Estate, the owner developer of mission critical life science campuses. Vail Resorts, the owner operator of awesome ski resorts worldwide, which sell more than 70% of their season tickets before it even snows. Tesla, the leading and low cost vertically integrated manufacturer of electric cars, which makes the best electric cars and the best of any car. And SpaceX, which provides low cost access to space with its reusable rockets. And through its Starlink satellites, broadband internet for the entire planet, everywhere. Now you're gonna be able to get internet everywhere because of Starlink. The moats, and no one else can do it because no one else gets the space almost for free. The moats protecting these businesses from competition are enormous, and their executives exceptionally talented. After you've listened to those four CEOs, I'm sure it's clear why we invest in people. Okay, let's go. The last time we were here was 2019. Our theme was, surprisingly, what's next? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> what's next? Four months later, we got the answer. Anybody here remember a global pandemic? Raise your hands. <laughs> the theme of the 2022 Barron Conference is anything is possible. You just never know. The duality of meanings for anything is possible, both good and bad, is intentional. We believe there will be awesome opportunities to make substantial capital gains amidst chaos. I want to address three topics today. Entropy, which is chaos and disorder, not being afraid to invest, and Barron Capital's purpose, strategy, and tactics. So first, entropy. Three years ago, few would have imagined that a microbe in a bat in Wuhan, China, would decipher the code that allowed its transmission to humans and change everything. You never saw people wearing masks around New York before. They're everywhere now. And that nine months ago, on the whim of just one individual, Russia invaded Ukraine, disrupted supply chains, created energy inflation, and terrorized civilian population centers. For those of you who didn't take AP Physics in high school, I looked it up, I took it. it wasn't great in it, but I took it. <laughs> uh, entropy means a tendency to randomness and disorder. Barron invests in businesses that are pro-entropic, that flourish despite chaos and disorder, or because of it. Think SpaceX's Starlink maintaining critical communications in Ukraine after Russia's invasion and in Florida after Hurricane Ian. By the way, in Ukraine, if you know, Zelensky called up Elon and said, I can't communicate with my troops, can you help me? And in two, I guess in 48 hours, he had all these user interfaces in, uh, in, in Ukraine, and it, it changed the war, totally changed the war. And it also showed everyone, it used to take two years before they got country approvals. They showed they could do it in 48 hours. What do you think that impact's gonna be on SpaceX business? Or Tesla replacing oil, and everybody who lives in those countries that doesn't have internet, all they, they know all they have to do is call up Musk and you'll get internet. Or Tesla replacing oil with electricity and batteries, or humans with robots when there aren't enough assembly workers to build cars. So once he has this mission, he always finds stuff that comes from those missions that he didn't think of before when he began his business. Or Arch Capital, whose insurance business increases in the value after natural disasters. We've been an investor in that since 2001, just before 9-11, and I don't know, we made 20 times our money so far. We founded Barron Capital on March 16, 1982. It was Linda, Susan, and Ron. Not Ron Burgundy, <laughs> the other Ron, me. <laughs> the United States economy was then in recession. Inflation was problematic, and interest rates were a lot higher than now. 
further short-term news cycles for nearly the entire past 40 years, the whole history of our firm. News cycles have been bad, awful or terrifying, just like now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was 800 when we started our business. It's now 32,000. So it's gone up 40 times despite all the terrible news. Pretty amazing. Should make you optimistic. The founding of our business amid chaos and disorder was not an accident. I believe you have a better chance to succeed if you start your business in tough times than in boom times. Two thirds of the businesses in the Dow Jones Industrial Average were founded in a recession, by the way. Everything is cheaper in a recession, talents available, and competitive threats are less. The corollary, it's better to invest in businesses during trouble times than in boom times. So this is a great time. We expect economic growth on planet Earth to soon accelerate, despite entropy. Growth rates have been increasing since the Industrial Revolution. For 1,800 years after the birth of Christ, world GDP and population increased only fourfold, two doubles in 1,800 years. Two doubles, 1,800 years. That meant you double your money in 900 years. So how would you like to be a stockbroker then? <laughs> in contrast, during the last 220 years, world population has increased eightfold and world GDP 100 times. 100 times in 220 years, four times in 1,800 years. We expect, and most of that growth is accelerating, we expect even faster GDP growth due to technology innovation, the space and digital revolutions, and healthcare advances. And we expect stronger stock market gains in the next 40 years than the last 40 years. So everyone talks about 31,000, 32,000, 28,000. I'm talking about a million in 2062. So investing during entropy. So art and not being afraid. In the aftermath of wars, pandemics, financial panics, inflation abates, and financial markets perform exceptionally well. We believe when the current inflation and supply chain disruptions caused by COVID and the war in Ukraine ends, which they will, markets will rebound strongly. I began my career as a securities analyst in 1970. The 1970s were a difficult time for the stock market and for America. Our country was traumatized by Vietnam, Watergate, the resignation of President Nixon, recession, the Iranian hostage crisis, inflation, gas lines, and three ineffective presidents. So they keep telling me, I shouldn't say anything bad about Jimmy Carter, but his idea about doing anything, I'm a Democrat, his idea of doing anything was wearing a sweater. That was it. <laughs> I hated that guy. <laughs> My experience during the 1970s was foundational as I learned to invest in pro-entropic businesses that grew materially during chaos. My institutional brokerage clients made a lot of money investing in growth companies I had researched and recommended, including Walt Disney, McDonald's, FedEx, Nike, Hyatt, Tropicana, Golden Nugget, Mattel, and Manicare. They made money because we invest in businesses, not stocks. So the lesson is, don't be afraid to invest. To Barron Capital's purpose, strategy, and tactics. Last topic. Barron's purpose is to enable individuals to, particip to, to participate in the growth of our economy, people like my parents, and to protect their savings from inflation, which in my lifetime has averaged four or five percent a year. Not 10 percent, not two percent, four or five. That means that everything you buy, almost everything you buy, tuition, housing, food, gasoline, cars, doubles about every 14 or 15 years. I wrote a report about this, I guess a couple quarters ago, and I listed in my life what the price of everything was in when I was in law school, when I was a kid, and what it is now. And uniformly, it's four, five, six percent a year. My parents' house, the first one they bought, 
was 1948, was $5,000. It's now $400,000. So that's inflation. You got to own stuff. The stock market, everything goes in half. Uh, everything doubles in price every uh, 15 years, 14, 15 years. That means the value of your money falls in half. Our goal is to double your money every five or six years. We've done that. Our strategy is to invest in businesses that grow faster than our economy, that are managed by exceptional people, that are competitively advantaged for the long term. So growth opportunities are easy to identify. Others can do this as well as we can. That's not our competitive advantage. We invest in people. Growth plus values was our conference theme in 2018. In addition, that's our t-shirt, love those t-shirts. In addition, and we have great themes. In addition to intelligence and leadership, that's what we consider growth, we assess character, culture, and empathy. That's the values. And we invest in people, as Linda mentioned, uh, whom we trust. Since we speak with and visit so many executives every day, thousands and thousands every year, we learn about their character, as well as the company they keep, which is important. Who are your friends? These interactions enable us, they, they tell you who, us, who you are. Uh, these interactions enable us to identify individuals in whom to invest. Understanding character is an essential barren competitive advantage. It's what algorithms can't do. Our process is continuous. The interview never ends. A perfect example. It took me four years after I met Elon Musk in 2010 to realize what an exceptional person he is. His mission, a little crazy, but an amazing person. He is a mission, I shouldn't say that. I mean, he's made us so much money and he's doing so much for Earth, for our planet, he's an incredible person. He's a mission and vision-driven entrepreneur solving some of the world's biggest problems. He's also a brilliant engineer and inventor. Others have compared Elon to John D. Rockefeller, who became the wealthiest man in the world in the 1980s, in 1880s. I think of him, I think of Elon as a modern day Leonardo da Vinci, a singular talent across multiple disciplines, and I can only imagine what people will think about him in 500 years from now. Leonardo da Vinci, not Rockefeller. Competitive advantage. Question everything was our theme in 2015. What we do <clears throat> is deconstruct businesses in our heads. We rip them apart in our heads to understand how they work. And then we ask ourselves, why can't other people do the same thing that these businesses are doing? Dan Huttenlocker, the dean of MIT Schwarzman College of, in, of Com Computing, recently visited me. Dan told me he learns more about someone from the questions they ask than from the answers they give. Ron, we want students at MIT to ask questions like you do, not to accept at face value what they're told. The question Elon most frequently asks is, why does it have to be this way? Before, why does it have to be this way? Great question. Before co-founding Tesla, he probably asked, why do cars need engines? Or why do they even need drivers? Right, turn. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. It means bear right. No. Up there. It said right. It said take a right. Yes. Make a right. It's a shortcut to right. It said go to the right. It can't mean that. There's a leg there. It knows where it's going. The machine knows. Stop yelling at me. Stop yelling at me. Stop yelling at me. So that's a good question. Why do we need drivers? Elon's fixing that. <laughs> Questioning everything is hard. We ask questions to determine if a business is competitively advantaged. Asking questions is Barron's competitive advantage. When we recently visited a Tesla factory, we watched a casting machine in operation. I had a million questions. Why is Tesla the only company that builds car frames by casting rather than welding? except for Tonka and Mattel, of course. Casting is complex and uses novel materials invented by SpaceX 
to withstand extreme heat and cold in space. Molten metals are heated to 1,292 degrees Fahrenheit and injected into a mold under 6,000 tons of pressure. The liquefied metal must cure in the, link, in the blink of an eye or it will crack. So think about that. Blink your eye. This has to cure by the time you blink your eye, otherwise it doesn't work. Tessa spent two years perfecting this, perfecting this method. Why? Because casting delivers a stronger, more consistent product produced faster in half the, half the floor space with 70% fewer robots and reduces welds from 1,700 to three. Of course, when you weld something, that's the weakest spot, and you take 1,700 and make it three, think about how much stronger your product is. This is one of the reasons why Tesla has the best cars. Since casting machines cost tens of millions each, how many people you think who work in most companies are willing to go to the CEOs and say, hey, I think we should spend tens of millions of dollars three or four times in this production line so we can have casting machines and what if it doesn't work? You think that guy's going to keep his job? Elon encourages people to do that. Casting is too risky for others to even try. When we invested in Tesla, we began to study SpaceX, obviously. When we visited their factory and launch site, my first question was, why is SpaceX the only company building reusable rockets? The answer is obvious. Other aerospace companies are in the business of selling more rockets, not selling reusable rockets, which would make them sell less rockets. Further, aerospace is a cost plus industry, guaranteed profit margins. That means aerospace companies benefit, they're incented to sell products that cost more, not less. So here, they just spend more and therefore they make a bigger profit. SpaceX is vertically integrated and through rapid innovation, builds cutting edge products at the lowest cost possible. That's SpaceX competitive advantage. Long term, exceptional takes time was the theme of our 2016 meeting. As a family owned business, Barron Capital is focused on long term growth, not short term profits. That's another one of our competitive advantages. How do we outperform? Vision was the theme of our 2013 meeting. Love these themes. We invest when businesses are reinvesting their profits to grow and penalizing current earnings, like FastSet, CoStar, Gartner, Vail, SpaceX, Tesla, just a few examples. We invest amidst uncertainty when news and sentiment are negative. That's when prices are most attractive. Pro and tropic investments make valuation and timing Less important, we rely on our firm's 43 talented analysts to know what to buy and to not sell. And you just saw those people, pictures of those people up there talking. It's, it's touching for me to, to think about all those people working with me. It's an amazing life I have. <clears throat> we don't outsource our research. Our primary source information gives us the vision to invest for the long term. Anything's possible. That's this year's theme, especially in America. My grandparents were immigrants from Eastern Europe. Poland, Ukraine, and the Pale in Russia, where Jews had to live. <clears throat> My dad's father became the foreman of a candle factory in Brooklyn. My mother's father was a construction worker who emigrated from the Pale through Ukraine. He became a peddler on the Lower East Side of New York, sold shoes from a pushcart. My mother, aunt, uncle, and grandparents lived on the fifth floor of a five-story tenement. That's like the penthouse. <laughs> doorman building, only people who lived there were doormen. <laughs> I can, I can tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> My immigrant grandparents would be amazed how their grandson is now recognized as the Tesla guy. Stop me on the street every day. People thank me in New York, which is my favorite city in the world. 
my family history. My family history, like yours and like millions of others, proves anything's possible. David Rubenstein, the founder of Carlyle Group and the noted philanthropist, recently authored a book, How to Invest, Masters on the Craft. Chapter two was an interview with me. That book, by the way, we're leaving in your goodie bag, and it says you know, prominently, read chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> The last question he asked, if you could change anything about your reputation, what would it be? And my answer was nothing. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure my younger self, if it could see me now, would be proud of my family's and employees' values and of our business. I'm hopeful that in 60 years from now, at the 100th anniversary, I'll be somewhere, <laughs> not here, <laughs> of Barron Capital. My grandchildren and their grandchildren will be as proud of their values, their business, and the lives they have lived as I am. Thank you for trusting us with your savings. <laughs> hey Siri, how'd I do? A word cloud. Congratulations, Ron. You used three new words. Wuhan, Entropy, and Vinny Barbarino. And you only mentioned Elon Musk 17 times. Yeah, that sounds about right. Thanks, Siri, for listening. And thank you, shareholders, for coming and, uh, and trusting us.